Probably another time. Uh, so first of all, welcome uh, to this uh, case study. Uh, as a just a matter of quick introduction, my name is Matthew Fina. Uh, I am an environmental economist at California Lutheran University in Thousand Oaks, California, uh, just outside Los Angeles. Uh, and I also have the privilege of um, being a part of a really exciting project uh, on the Oxnard Plain in Ventura County uh, to implement a water a pilot water market uh, and work with a really extraordinary technology partner, Ranch Systems, in the implementation of advanced metering infrastructure. Uh, and so that's who I am. Uh, and uh, my name is Daniel Howe. I work with Ranch Systems and. We designed a hardware and software uh, solution for the water market as well as for the automated meter infrastructure for Fox Canyon. And so our goal uh, for the next 45 minutes or so is to just sort of start with a 30,000 foot view. What, is a, what do we mean by a water market? I understand that that term means a lot of different things uh, throughout California and in various parts of the world. So what do we mean by a water market? Why would we consider undertaking a system of trading groundwater rights and or, or groundwater allocation in this case. Uh, and then I want to walk through the history of um, how this project came about and where we actually stand right now in Ventura County implementing uh, this project. And then I'm going to pass the microphone to Daniel uh, and he's going to really go into some detail about uh, some of these amazing tools that they've developed uh, because I would sort of venture that uh, uh, this is some of the uh, um, most stringent, this will be some of the most stringent monitoring of agricultural groundwater extraction I'm aware of. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the tools they've developed uh, to facilitate that are really remarkable. Um, so as I start, um, uh, I want to talk about the water market and the nexus with this technology. And so if I were to sort of summarize maybe the most important theme I hope to drive home, uh, is that the ability to transfer groundwater allocation uh, um, according to Ventura County um, uh, agricultural pumpers is really an essential tool that gives them the flexibility to ensure the viability of agriculture in the face of significant cuts to groundwater extraction in the years ahead. Uh, and the, one of the powers of markets and the incentives that they create is that um, they actually created a situation where growers were asking uh, for a very high level um, uh, of uh, monitoring uh, by the local groundwater agency. And so that's sort of this nexus that, uh, that the market gives them flexibility, but the incentives involved in the market really help to support uh, sustainable groundwater management. Uh, and that these tools uh, give us uh, a new frontier for, for doing that. Um, I do want to point out that the context for this um, is Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency, a, a special act district in Ventura County. And this would not have been possible without the very progressive groundwater management that had already been happening in the region um, since uh, the late 80s and early 90s. All right, so uh, just to start, talk about what is a market, what do we mean by a market, and why might we think about this. Um, I just want to highlight real quick um, that the problem we're trying to do, we're trying to solve, is the coordination between the supply and demand of groundwater um, in the Fox Canyon basins uh, in the coastal part of Ventura County. Uh, and uh, currently, um, those basins, like many basins in California, are in a state of shortage where uh, the amount of it, uh, uh, the demand for water exceeds the supply by a considerable amount. Uh, and that's true in dry years as well as in wet years. Uh, and so uh, there's a big difference here between a drought and a water shortage. Uh, and, the, and the project that we're going to discuss is really meant to address that long-term shortage uh, of water. Obviously, the context in which this project began um, was the severe drought that we all know very well. Uh, and so this really, the nexus of, or the origin of this began in uh, early 2016 among a group of growers uh, in Ventura County. Uh, in, and they were really looking at the possibility of very severe cuts to groundwater extraction in the years ahead. Um, now that was 2016, this is 2018. Um, some of you may know that Ventura County was actually one of two counties where the entire county remained in a state of moderate drought even during the uh, abundant rainfall of 20, uh, 
16, 2017. Uh, and so this is actually the state of groundwater. Uh, so this shows available storage in one of the groundwater basins that we're considering. Uh, and what we see here is if on this chart, obviously, if the blue line hits the top, we have water artesianing out of the ground. So this is ground level. Uh, and you can see that water levels in underground storage rise and fall with precipitation. And this right here is approximately sea level. Uh, and so what you see is that in Ventura County, um, since the earliest days of the most recent drought, um, have actually been below sea level and saltwater intrusion um, is, a, is a pressing issue. Um, so how do we get here in Ventura County? Well, some of this really has to do with the way that groundwater has historically been allocated uh, in California. So many of you know, uh, when we're talking about groundwater, there's different types of water rights. Uh, there's overliers, people who actually own land that are not part of municipal water uh, agencies and actually have the overlying right to the water that's associated with their land. In that case, uh, uh, they can put a straw on the ground, so to speak, and pump that water for their own uh, economic benefit, right? for their own reasonable and beneficial use. Uh, what's interesting is that the way that that's been interpreted in much of California is to say that the, that water right really only extends to the property line. They can pump water if they're an agricultural pumper. They can turn that water into economic products for their own benefit. And they can ship those economic products um, outside the basin, even outside the country. Uh, and in Ventura County, um, that comes in the form of uh, berry production. Our two biggest exports are strawberries and raspberries. We're also one of the biggest producers of celery. Uh, and then, of course, avocados and lemons, among other uh, crops. Uh, but what? Um, agricultural water users have not historically had the ability to do was to forego agricultural production and actually engage in the sale of water directly. So they could turn it into, into agricultural products and sell those, uh, but they were not allowed historically to actually just forego production and sell the water instead. Uh, and so that kind of produces a uh, very predictable result. Uh, if all you're allowed to do is use the water or lose it to someone else's use, uh, when we know that groundwater levels are declining uh, in aquifers, uh, I would argue that sort of rational economic choice is to pump the water to the bottom before the next grower does. Uh, and so it's not surprising to me that under a system uh, like has been practiced in much of California throughout the years that we would see uh, declining groundwater levels. Now a different approach is to assign um, sort of quantified allocations of water uh, and so that a grower has a fixed amount and then giving them the flexibility to either use that fixed amount to engage in agricultural production or to sell part of their allocation or all of their allocation to another grower uh, so that the water can actually move between lower value and higher value uses. Now, what had actually happened in uh, Fox Canyon basins in Ventura County is actually a hybrid between these two extremes. We weren't a uh, traditional groundwater basin like many throughout California um, where it was really about overliers and appropriators. We also weren't a perfectly quantified um, system of allocation where growers could sell. Um, but as I mentioned, Fox Canyon was very progressive. Um, we were been a special act district since the late 80s and the state legislation which authorized um, uh, Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency actually gave it authorities to actually set quantified allocations and then to actually impose restrictions on pumping. So in Fox Canyon, we've actually had a system that was closer to um, sort of a market ideal, um, but we didn't traditionally have a formal way for growers uh, to transfer allocations. Uh, and that's really what I'll talk about um, that we've done recently. Um, so water markets, whether they're groundwater markets or surface water markets, are well known around the world. Some of the most uh, pure examples of these can be found in Australia, uh, where they have uh, very large, very thick markets with um, you know, thousands of economic actors making marginal water use decisions and then either buying additional water or selling it on formal exchanges. Uh, so this is an example here from uh, one basin in Australia. And what you can see here in the red line um, is uh, the price. The blue line is the volume of water traded. 
And what Australia did is way back uh, in 2004, they actually issued title to water. It's a very pure um, uh, rights-based management system where you had title to land and you had separate title to water. And those two things could be uh, separated and traded independently. And so that happened in 2004. Uh, Australia also suffered, many of you know, a 14-year-long drought called the Millennium Drought. Um, by some estimates, an order of magnitude worse than the drought that we just suffered here in California. And so what you see uh, is that 2006, 2007, uh, because of that drought, the volume of water trading started to increase dramatically. Uh, and over time, through that drought, uh, new water supplies came online. The culture of trading became integral to uh, uh, in particular agricultural practices uh, in Australia. Uh, and these became very mature markets with very large volumes of water traded and very low predictable prices uh, for water. And so this is sort of the purest example of a water market. You can't quite reproduce this in California because we don't have the clear definition of, of um, water entitlement that they have, uh, but it's certainly a pure example. There's US water markets uh, throughout the Midwest uh, most notably in um, Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado. Uh, and so the Twin Plant Natural Resource District uh, has a groundwater market that was actually created through a court adjudication. Uh, and that's a formal centralized market where uh, uh, mostly corn growers um, actually trade um, rights. Uh, and then there's also the current, the Central Kansas water bank um, where growers can actually store, individual landowners can store water uh, in the ground um, and then pump that back out at some time in the future. Uh, not unlike uh, the current water bank uh, in Central California. Another frontier for water markets and one uh, that there has been some interest um, in regard to in Ventura County is uh, the frontier of environmental water markets. So this is a water market in the Willamette Valley, Valley the Oregon Freshwater Trust, uh, and they created a market simply to pay um, uh, agricultural operators to forego diversions of surface water while fish are migrating. Um, so rather than using an Endangered Species Act finding uh, and regulation through NIMS, uh, they just decided, hey, we're going to create a market, pay farmers, find out what it would take to make them indifferent between diverting water and not diverting water, uh, and uh, pay them not to divert water when fish are migrating. Uh, and so a pretty interesting model where they create a market uh, and then use that to support sustainable management. Uh, there are transfers of uh, groundwater pumping that are an integral part of many of California's 24 or 25 adjudicated basins. Uh, and so there is a history of groundwater transfers, um, but normally uh, the, the the markets that exist in adjudicated basins, like one in Santa Paula Basin, which is in Ventura County, are informal, they're not centralized. Uh, the rights are clearly defined, um, but it's actually fairly difficult to find um, willing buyers and sellers. Uh, and so they're not as centralized and formal as what I'll discuss in uh, Ventura County. So what are the benefits of markets? Well, uh, if we use Australia as an example, the National Water Commission there estimates uh, that in the driest year of the millennium drought, transfers of water from lower value uses to higher value uses um, actually accounted for $370 million in direct economic gain in a single year. In this case, it was mostly the retirement of rice growing. So rice production went to zero in the driest year of the drought, and that water was made available to higher value um, agricultural products, permanent crops in particular, and it was also actually made available to uh, municipal water users uh, throughout the country so that cities could forego uh, the most uh, draconian cuts to water use. Um, one of the lessons there and in South America and in the American uh, West where water markets are used is that water trading supports agricultural productivity. Uh, notably, 64% of farmers traded water between 2008 and 2011 in Australia. 64% of all growers either bought or sold water uh, during the millennium drought. And 90% of farmers in a National Water Commission survey reported that their, the viability of their businesses uh, required uh, the ability to transfer water. Uh, and water trading has also been shown to benefit the environment, not just in environmental water markets where uh, 
where the benefits are conferred directly to uh, migrating fish populations. Uh, but where trading has been practiced, it's been shown to increase water levels and water quality, again, through alignment of incentives. Uh, and so trading increases economic returns to conservation, can stimulate investments in new supplies, and can realign incentives to support uh, various management goals. Now, of the various water markets have shown, um, these water markets vary tremendously uh, in the various forms they take. Who is eligible to trade? What the actual unit that's traded in the market is very different. Uh, in um, in uh, Australia, they trade a, a unit, they use a volumetric unit of water. In central Nebraska, they actually trade an irrigated acre. Right? So the unit of trade is very different in many of these markets. How transfers or how, uh, how willing buyers and sellers find each other and agree to a transaction price varies. Um, how the transfers are actually recorded and enforced varies. Um, how impacts to third parties are mitigated varies. Uh, so in some water markets, this is a real serious concern. The transfer of pumping between two areas in a basin can impact a third party that's not a member to the actual transfer. Uh, and so uh, mitigation strategies become important. And then um, notification procedures to the various regulatory agencies vary. Uh, and so in Fox Canyon, um, uh, as we were contemplating um, uh, rec recommendations regarding the, the uh, form, the structure, and the operational mechanism for a water market, each of these various things um, uh, were considered by the group, by uh, the group there, the stakeholders that, that worked on this. So here's what we're talking about. So this is a map of uh, the Fox Canyon basins in Ventura County. Uh, and so this is the southern half, the coastal half of the county. So in this photo, uh, this is Los Angeles County right here. All right, the 101 freeway goes through Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, and right into the San Fernando Valley, if you know where that is right here. Uh, and then to our west would be Santa Barbara County. Uh, and so this is a region that has about 700,000 residents uh, in uh, the cities of Ventura, Oxnard, Camarillo, and Thousand Oaks. Uh, it also has about 55,000 acres of prime agricultural land. So this is some of the most valuable agricultural land in the world. In fact, in recent years, there have been um, transaction prices for land of as much as $100,000 an acre, uh, usually for prime berry ground. Now, uh, just as a quick aside, that $100,000 is not because of uh, development rights. This is not a developer buying ag land to put homes on it. We actually have the most stringent uh, land use controls of any county in the United States. Uh, and uh, so there is no development right um, on most of the agricultural land that's outside of urban margins. But this is very valuable agricultural land. Uh, nonetheless, and so the red boundary that you see here is Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency, as I mentioned. That's a special active district created by the California legislature in the 80s. Uh, and so Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency manages um, groundwater extraction in, uh, I guess it would be about five basins uh, uh, representing 55,000 acres of agricultural land and three of the cities, 400,000 of the residents in Ventura County. Now, like much of California, annual precipitation is highly variable in Ventura County. So you can see here that we show um, precipitation levels. Uh, and there are the green line is average precipitation, which is about 18 inches in most of those coastal basins. Uh, and what you see is that there are many more years of below average rainfall than above average rainfall. In fact, the this, this sort of hydrologic system is balanced by these deluges that happen every few years uh, and then um, followed often by uh, several below average rainfall years. You can see we did have a big rainfall event um, uh, one year ago, uh, but actually uh, many of the major storm systems seem to part around the transverse ranges, mountain ranges uh, in Southern California, and we didn't get much rainfall, uh, just a slightly above average year last year. And you can see that this year we're well below average rainfall uh, in coastal basins. I showed you this slide earlier. Um, we have a state of persistent um, saltwater intrusion in coastal aquifers 
um, as a result of significant overpumping, uh, most uh, especially in, during the drought. Uh, we also have uh, pressing environmental issues. Uh, so Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency actually has one of the great geologic gifts um, in California, which is um, an exposed aquifer that I'm told if you float 12 feet of water on top of recharge basins, you can drop 12 feet of water a day uh, into underground storage. Uh, and so we have this amazing geological gift. Water can be diverted off of uh, a river called the Santa Clara River um, during precipitation events. But we actually have an Endangered Species Act finding on that ri river. And the ability to divert water in the future uh, for uh, underground recharge is actually uncertain. Uh, and so uh, what this actually shows is National Marine Fisheries desired level of diversion. So here you see the yellow area under the curve is the amount of water that's diverted yeah, into underground storage. The blue uh, area is the actual uh, water that's allowed to flow out to sea. And National Marine Fisheries would like us um, to move to these bypass flows. Uh, and so the ability to divert water in the future uh, is unclear. So that's really to say that with saltwater intrusion, ESA finding um, <coughs> affecting uh, uh, potential diversion in the future, this is an area of California with tremendous uncertainty around groundwater supply in the years ahead. And that's where the water market and AMI pilot really enters. Uh, so going back to January of 2016, uh, there was a group of growers uh, in uh, Fox Canyon that had already been regularly meeting with, um, we call them the GMA, the Groundwater Management Agency, um, to sort of weigh in on various regulatory measures. Pardon me. And, uh, and so the growers group actually really decided to tackle this issue of moving from the current system of allocation um, to uh, proposing a more clearly defined uh, quantified allocation with the ability to trade groundwater among agricultural users. Uh, so in Jan uh, so that actually began in 2015, um, uh, early in the drought. Uh, in 2016, uh, the groundwater regulator actually uh, chair uh, chartered something called the Water Market Group, which was an expanded stakeholder group that included all of the growers, the 50 or so growers that had already regularly been meeting with uh, the groundwater regulators, but also included the cities of Oxnard, Ventura, and Camarillo. Again, uh, cities with about 400,000 residents. And that water market group also included uh, the Nature Conservancy uh, in order to represent environmental water needs. Uh, so that group, the water market group, uh, met for seven months every other week. Uh, and as you can imagine, when you put cities and farmers in a room together. Uh, it's a little contentious at first. Uh, in fact, the first few meetings were utterly painful uh, as we sort of staked out um, territory and, uh, and began to slay dragons uh, in the room. When you put farmers and environmentalists together, you can imagine uh, that this is often contentious at the beginning. Uh, but very remarkably, uh, over seven months, uh, that group of about 50 stakeholders met uh, slayed those dragons, uh, really established what it was that they were willing to compromise on and what they weren't. Uh, and in September of 2016, that group unanimously approved a set of recommendations for the structure and operational mechanisms for a groundwater market in Fox Canyon that was presented to the Fox Canyon Board of Directors. Uh, and so it was a pretty remarkable process. And there was unanimity. There was actually no uh, there wasn't a minority report that disagreed with the group's finding. Uh, and so uh, uh, one of the recommendations, as that group uh, staked out what this thing would look like, uh, was that uh, they decided we needed to engage in a pilot. So I, I should back up just slightly. Uh, one of the things the stakeholder group did is they surveyed adjudicated basins. They actually interviewed people who are operating water markets around the world. Uh, so we have people from Australia, people from the American West and various places. Um, and uh, they read academic papers on water markets. Uh, and one of the things that we heard, no matter who we asked, was, well, this is, this is a pretty awesome challenge. Moving to uh, a system of formal centralized groundwater trading is a big step, uh, and you should engage in it humbly. And so uh, one of the recommendations was engage in a pilot, have a test market test rules, learn what the unintended consequences are. 
uh, and sort of have an adaptive approach that can grow over time. So in December of 2016, just a few months after the Water Market Group uh, completed its work, um, the Fox Canyon GMA Board of Directors approved phase one of a water market pilot. So they actually wrote an ordinance authorizing that, which ran through July 31st. So the market had a um, clear starting point and a clear ending point, uh, and uh, it allowed us to try things and really troubleshoot um, problems. So my university, California Lutheran University, was chosen as the exchange administrator. Ranch Systems was chosen as the AMI vendor. Uh, and we began a process of enrolling participants and actually trying to troubleshoot problems that Daniel can highlight uh, with uh, implementing this technology. Uh, I, guess, I guess I should add, too, that uh, in addition to the recommendation that we engage in a market pilot, one of the really extraordinary recommendations that came out of the water market group was if we're going to trade groundwater, you have to have the highest level of monitoring available. So I ask you to imagine this. You had, a, you had 50 growers in the room, um, and the growers said, we need to go out and find out what is the highest level of monitoring that we can impose on ourselves. Uh, and so the recommendation that went to the directors was that you're going to need to pass an ordinance requiring um, advanced metering infrastructure telemetry on 700 groundwater wells, uh, agricultural pumping facilities, um, so that we can monitor each other. Uh, and so this, to me, really highlights the power of markets and the incentives that they create. Um, you had growers who were, in many parts of the state, absolutely adverse to any kind of um, uh, regulation, saying, if we're going to trade water and somebody's cheating, they're devaluing my asset. I want to make sure that every other grower um, has the highest level of monitoring available. Uh, and so the AMI piece was central uh, to the water market pilot from the very beginning. Uh, and so that first pilot uh, phase concluded January 31st. Um, we got a lot of attention from the Nature Conservancy. Uh, one of the things the Nature Conservancy, which was again a member of that stakeholder group designing this project, what they noted right away was how progressive Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency was. The directors and the GMA staff were, uh, that they had actually been monitoring groundwater extraction um, uh, since the 90s. Uh, and when they heard about the advanced, or sorry, the universal AMI piece, we really, really caught their attention. Uh, and so at the end of 2016, uh, sorry, at the end of 2017, Ranch Systems actually applied for a Natural Resource Conservation Service Grant, NRCS Conservation Innovation Grant. And in June, we actually won an award. Uh, it was part of a $1.9 million grant, the largest uh, that NRCS issued a year ago. Uh, with the idea of funding the implementation of all of this hardware on 700 groundwater wells, and also with the idea of trying to learn lessons that, that other basins throughout California could use. So an important part of this history is sort of that validation we got in June of 2017 uh, with the Conservation Innovation Grant. Phase two of the water market pilot um, began in October and runs until September 30th of this year, and that's an expanded water market uh, this is a uh, test market with exclusively agricultural pumpers. Um, we are actually currently up to, we're uh, uh, about 76 uh, pumpers uh, that are currently requesting enrollment in the pilot, and we think we're gonna hit 100 wells this year. Uh, and we'll give you some updates on uh, AMI implement implementation at the end as well. Uh, and then in February, uh, uh, and this is actually February of 2018, that's a typo, um, the, uh, the GMA actually passed an ordinance to require um, advanced metering infrastructure telemetry on all 700 agricultural wells. Uh, and so that's sort of the history uh, as they look at cuts to groundwater extraction and incentivize conservation, create an economic return to conservation, uh, establish the preliminary market value of the water. One of the questions is, well, what's an acre foot of water worth uh, in an agricultural context? What's it worth in a municipal context? Uh, and what is a higher value and a lower value use? And so the goal of the market is to sort of flesh out what that preliminary market value is, to gather insight about rules, and then gather insight into the monitoring, uh, which we'll talk about in some details. This is a test market. Uh, so in this test market, uh, individual participants have fixed allocations. Uh, it's based on historical pumping, uh, but they have a fixed allocation. If they use less than that fixed allocation, 
they can sell their unused allocation to another market participant. Uh, and so again, there's a real economic return to conservation. If they need to, um, if they need a little more water to finish, you know, a 29-day cilantro rotation, um, they can go to the market and actually uh, purchase allocation from someone else. These are in-kind transfers of pumping, so there's actually no moving of water. Um, this is all happening within a single basin, and so one person pumps more here and pays someone else to pump less in the same basin. Uh, and one of the conditions of all of this is that they install uh, the ranch systems hardware, which you'll hear about. Um, Daniel will give you a little more detail, but what you can see here is uh, this is a just is a very typical pumping facility on the Oxnard Plain. This is one of the ranch systems units that was actually installed during the pilot. Uh, and uh, what's really neat about this is not just that uh, that this monitoring is happening is that one of the really powerful tools that Ranch Systems built was a central database where all of that pumping data is aggregated, collected and aggregated, uh, and made available at different resolutions to pumpers, to regulators, and to the water market. Uh, so this is just a quick snapshot of what we call the, the Ranch Systems data portal. This shows an individual agricultural pumper's uh, well, the location of a well, and then of course they get uh, daily pumping totals transmitted from uh, the ranch systems telemetry. Uh, as the exchange administrator, um, I have a similar view, except I can see every single well that's enrolled in the water market pilot, uh, and, but I see much lower resolution pumping data. So I don't get annual or daily pumping totals. I just see the total pumping year to date for the pumper and how much water is available for transfer. And then bids and offers on water are actually submitted through the Ranch Systems Data Portal. The regulator can also see every single well uh, and gets a monthly pumping report, electronic month, uh, pumping report. Uh, in terms of trading, um, uh, that's auto fully automated through the Ranch Systems Data Portal. So uh, bids and offers are submitted uh, through the portal. The, those bids and offers are actually uh, exported to a cloud-based uh, system, which actually captures uh, and then exports bids and offers to a uh, software trading algorithm. Uh, and so uh, if people are curious about it, we, I can take lots of questions at the end about how the actual trading um, happens. But, uh, but one of the things that growers thought was really important is that this is an anonymous market. They don't know who they're buying from or who they're selling to because uh, they didn't want the politics of, of uh, relationships on the Oxnard Plain to impact people's willingness to buy and sell. They didn't want to risk being shut out of a market, and so these are anonymous markets, and we actually use a, tra a, a matching algorithm that makes as many possible matches as possible. Uh, we can do partial matching. If someone's selling 100 acre feet, I can match that with two uh, people buying 50 acre feet. Uh, and so it's an anonymous algorithmic matching system. And again, because it's entered through the Ranch Systems Data Portal uh, and archived uh, in the cloud, uh, this is a highly auditable, um, uh, redundant system for capturing all that information. Uh, and so lastly, before I move to Daniel, I just want to talk about the involvement of the Nature Conservancy. As I mentioned, they were really excited about uh, the progressive groundwater management that was already happening in Ventura County. Uh, and really excited about the work of the water market group. Um, so they applied for this conservation innovation grant. And the way that's actually been implemented is to create a series of um, uh, incentives to uh, drive participation in the water market pilot. Uh, and so uh, there's about $800,000 of that $1.9 million grant that goes directly to growers uh, on the Oxnard Plain, paying for the hardware that you see and then also reimbursing them for costs associated with market participant. Uh, and so growers, depending on how early they sign up, um, can receive a, a, a rebate of as much as $3,500. And then over time, that those incentives under the grant will, uh, will fall off. Again, the idea is to drive early adoption in both the AMI telemetry and also uh, in the water market. Uh, and so this has really been a critical piece. Uh, it's one thing when growers get together and say, hey, we've got to have this, uh, this uh, regulatory oversight. It's another thing when you show them the price tag. Uh, and so it's been really remarkable to have a partner in, 
in the Nature Conservancy that was able to secure funding for implementation of all this hardware, uh, in many cases at no cost whatsoever to the grower. Uh, and so um, that's sort of the history, where we're at, uh, how we got here, and now I really want Daniel to talk about this amazing, these amazing tools. Thank you. I appreciate the introduction. Thank you very much. So at the end of the, the presentation, I'll take some uh, take some time to answer some questions and go through any concerns that you have about the technology and also just how things work. So you can do one on one and just answer questions if you like. Um, but focus of my presentation will be primarily on the hardware and the software component uh, of this. So if you don't know anything about ranch systems, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we do and what our focus is. Um, we're looking really to make the world a better place for farmers um, and also for um, uh, any, anyone looking to automate uh, full field or an industrial application. Um, so this is our focus, is to, to provide the best quality equipment to do that, and uh, an intuitive way to do that as well. So some of our customers, um, we have customers from farmers, uh, management companies, consultants, agronomists, um, and also water management um, districts, municipalities, um, et cetera. Um, we've been serving uh, agriculture for over 10 years now. And so our existing product has found its, its way into all kinds of installations or use cases. As you can see behind me, uh, the ranch systems solution is not just this optical reader or some uh, monitoring application that's used for this one particular use case. It's used for a lot of different um, uh, different uses. There we go. So you can see the hardware that we um, we have at the bottom, and uh, moving up from the hardware is our, our platform, which really makes Ranch Systems special. Is that we're able to um, provide all these encompassing features over the top of the hardware that kind of provides the glue to keep it all together. And so um, when Fox Canyon came to us and said, this is kind of what we're looking to do, we started looking at, at how are we gonna put this together. And fortunately, our platform is so flexible enough that it allows us the capability of creating these custom um, widgets. For example, like you saw in Matthew's presentation, and also to connect various hardware like the optical reader, which we've designed. I'll talk about it shortly. So um, ranch systems, there's a lot of things that make us different, but primarily we're based in, in California. Uh, we care a lot about what's going on in our, our state, and we look to um, create strong working relationships that last. Uh, ranch systems is uh, in a privately held company, and um, we look to be here to, to, to the future. Uh, this is our team. And these are uh, kind of a little map of our resellers uh, internationally. So let's talk a little bit about the AMI hardware. To do so, I kind of have to give you a little introduction about what that hardware is, uh, some of the challenges when you go into making a solution. I think one of the first things you have to understand is uh, what are the challenges and how do you overcome those challenges are kind of a secondary thought. Um, you start to, to really put together what those challenges are and, and uh, put together the solution afterwards. So um, these are the things we're going to be talking about. Um, the key challenges of this AMI solution, there is over 700 wells with different types of flow meters. They can all be different, they can be um, mechanical, they can be digital, they can have different faces on them. So going out and replacing all those flow meters so that they're all consistent, you have a, uh, the same flow meter or the same uh, specification of that flow meter would be very costly. They want to um, 
be able to detect if that flow meter has been tampered with. So has there anything happened to that flow meter physically or electronically? And they also need to, to have an ongoing accuracy and calibration uh, monitoring. So we started looking at this and we looked at, at, at some of our background in, in monitoring uh, farms. And a farm is very much like the use case of monitoring flow meter for a water district or for an agency like uh, FGDMA. We needed something that, that provided a continuity of data and reliable, accurate data. So we designed this solution, uh, which is essentially the components that you see here on the screen, also on the table in various locations. So afterwards, when we're done, I, I invite you to come up and, and pick them up and, and look at it and ask questions. Um, but what you see is the optical reader um, down here. And a lot of people, they ask kind of how it works, but it's, it's, it's a fancy camera, right? Um, and this goes on top of the flow meter, and it captures the same thing that a grower would see in the field. And so what we're doing is, is automating the visual recognition of that flow meter. And then we're using these other sensors, uh, <laughs> such as figure two and three, which are feedback sensors to validate that the reading that we're getting from this hotelizer is also quantified by these other sensors. So we can have a running average or an estimate of what it should have been uh, based on nominal data and flows that have been recorded. So through the pilot, we started learning a lot about installations. We learned about how uh, pumps operate with growers that are large medium, uh, mid-sized, and really small growers. Um, so we started out with, um, you can kind of see this here, which is just a, it's a standard camera pointing at the optical reader. And we learned a lot. Uh, we learned how, um, we learned a lot about how the operations of a wellhead <laughs> uh, occur in, in, a, in a farm. And Things that we thought we knew, uh, we, we completely had to relearn and work with growers and work with farmers and work with the workers. Like literally, uh, okay, go ahead and show me how you're going to do this, and then have to watch them and, and the things that they would do, such as um, they would take their hand and put their hand on top of something like this, and it created a chain of events that that looked like in our data, it looked like a bad reading, because what would happen is the the lens would move when they put their hand on it. So we had to work a lot, you know, really closely with these growers to understand not only how to solve the problem, but to work with it so it'd be robust and reliable going on uh, and into the future. So, in, you know, the, the optical reader has some great features to it. Notably, these, these bullet points here talk about it. Um, but like I said, uh, working with the growers, we found that they wanted to be able to pick this thing up and, and put it back on at any angle, and it needed to be able to be resilient, uh, dust resistant, water resistant, and so that's what we've designed here. So lastly, on, on this particular slide, it is good to mention that these units, while we did start out with an earlier version, which was just a camera, we went out and retrofitted every single one of the pilot uh, units with the, uh, the newer model, which we call the optical reader or the FLMP20, and has been field tested uh, since March of last year, and doing quite well, I might add. So if this is just a, uh, this, this does come up every once in a while, it's a camera, but it also is creating a data point from every one of those images. So it's taking that image and it converts it over to a data point which you see in the online software. So then we also use these feedback sensors. Um, the idea here is to estimate the volume of water that we'd expect to see. The redundancy being that um, we'd like to choose two feedback sensors, not including the flow meter or the optical reader, 
And that just gives us a, a level of redundancy and a, a quality of data. So for that, we chose something uh, that was the pressure sensor in the pilot. So we had a pressure sensor to measure the level of head. And then we also used another sensor uh, to measure the, the work units of the pump. And that helped us to determine how much pressure it had and also how much energy it was creating to determine the volume of water without actually using a flow meter. So we got a flow meter and we got two other feedback sensors and we're just trying to calculate what should the volume of water be. And we calculate those two to see if there's a problem. And if there is, then we have a, an alert. So uh, part of this installation, we have to create um, a workflow for uh, documentation. And this just shows uh, some of the checklists that are performed during that installation. And then post-installation, we have um, training guides, user manuals, and other resources. So as Matthew pointed out, I'm just going to try and breeze through this because I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, the Ranch Cloud is another component of this. We just talked about the hardware. We also have the software. Um, and we call the, the software component the Ranch Cloud. And so there's basically three different parts of this. Um, you've got the components in the field, the hardware. You've got the optical reader and the conversion of it. You've got Ranch Cloud, which is where the user logs in and they can interact with the water market, they can see what their allocation is, and uh, go up from there. So you, you can see um, in this illustration, you've got the RS-130 connects to the cloud, and this is where the user logs in and sees their data. It's in the cloud, it's on their smartphone, it's on their computer, um, and that way it has uh, the data backed up in redundant servers, uh, backed up and stored, and you can access it from any device. The other uh, benefit of using something that's cloud-based like this is the data streams. We can import and export that data that we receive. So we can take data from numerous sources. Uh, we can provide data to NIMPS, for example. We've set up uh, automated exports to NIMPS based on an agreement when a, a user says this is what we want to do, that's what we do. Um, so we don't just go and set it up, for example. But all this together allows us to create alerts and reports and a way of monitoring everything that's happening in the field. This is an example uh, screenshot of our mobile interface. And from that mobile interface, you can get into and see that screenshot that Matthew was showing earlier. So from this, you've got all these different, um, uh, what we call metadata or metadata. And it shows um, this to the user so they can see it in a geographical context. So they've got little dots on a map so as, it, as the agency logs in, they can see it in the visual context. They can also see it in a numeric spreadsheet uh, tab uh, tabulated format as well. Or they can just see it as a, as a graph. And so this, this, this functionality or flexibility that uh, our software offered just allows them to use it in any way that they need to. The side benefit of this was the access control that Matthew uh, mentioned earlier. So that each different user, we called them group, but it was just basically a type, had different user rights. They can only see a certain amount of data or certain properties. And that's something that we do on a, on a pretty constant basis for our users already. It was just a reuse of technology for this. <laughs> so this is just an overview of the different user types, and what they were able to see. And, what, uh, and again, this is based on the grower, uh, grower's group input. This isn't, this isn't Ranch Systems or uh, CIU coming up with some sort of an idea of what, what it needed to be. This is all, this is all directed, uh, saying this is the way we need it to be, and so we built it to that. That's just an example of the software. Um, you'll notice here how you have, uh, you'll notice here how you have a large number of items here, a lot of information. And then it's just, it's the context is only for that one grower. When they click on any of these dots, this is the view that they have, and this is where they can interact with the water market, buy and sell, trade. And then this is the water market administrator. Those views are then constricted again. And then this is the Fox Canyon staff view. Again, even more if you want to look at these two balloons, you see how the balloons get smaller. 
and then smaller. Eventually there's no data, it just tells them who it is and how much water they've used. So um, our users are typically using ranch systems alongside with other components. This is just an example. Our primary user base has weather stations, soil moisture monitoring, irrigation control, all these different components in the field for controlling what they have um, in terms of an agribusiness. So we can control and monitor um, any of those components. The benefit of using our system alongside with the AMI is that these are a lot of our customers already. It gives them the, the capability of doing much more than just the flow meter monitoring. It gives them another little um, component that they can use. So in terms of why, why Ranch Systems was selected for this, um, I can't really say uh, exactly why, um, but I can attribute to guess that this optical reader can be used for every single flow meter that's in the basin. Uh, the system has been designed from the start for the users, by the users, and uh, with extensive uh, interaction with uh, CLU and Ranch Systems and uh, FCGMA to make sure that we had a quality system. And um, that, that concludes my presentation. I, I have one more slide just in case there's any more questions. I just leave it up here just to, yeah. Yeah, please. Um, so just to sort of summarize all of this, because it's a lot of information. Uh, mm -hmm. So Fox Canyon, 700 agricultural wells are engaged in a project that's a formal centralized exchange for transferring groundwater pumping allocation. Growers said they needed this in order to remain viable, confronted with 40 to 50% potential future cuts to groundwater extraction. The ability to trade necessitated the highest level of monitoring available. Uh, and ranch systems created, you know, literally a, a highly tailored solution to the unique needs uh, in Fox Canyon. In fact, one of the things I would add that was so amazing is he mentioned it was the growers who said, the growers were really concerned about uh, data privilege, who owns the data? Uh, and they were able to create a tiered structure uh, where different user types had different access. I could even call up ranch systems and say, you know, the live map is nice, but I needed to do X. Mm -hmm. Two days later, it did X, right? Yeah, it so was actually, it was a day later, uh, <laughs> but we didn't, we didn't let you use it until we were absolutely sure. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it's been a really unique partnership. Uh, and then lastly, um, uh, you know, all of this is possible because of the progressive groundwater management that was already happening in Ventura County uh, with groundwater monitoring uh, dating back to the 90s. Uh, and so it's a unique project. Uh, and we really welcome your um, questions. Did you want to give a quick update? Yeah. yeah. So sure. update Who's responsible for the calibration of flow meters? So that's uh, individual uh, operators. They have to maintain the, the calibration. And document it. And documentation. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the one of the biggest hurdles for the watermark pilot was calibration certifications and uh, compliance. Mm -hmm. You know they couldn't be in the water market until that was done. And, so, and, and real quick, just to, to relate to this, what was really unique about the stakeholder process that unfolded is after the the group decided we want to recommend uh, this this solution. Uh, growers immediately were starting to try to figure out, well, how am I going to game this, right? Uh, and, so, uh, and so it was really nice having them in the room working uh, because that's really what produced these validation measures, right? Uh, they have to do uh, a, there's a meter calibration requirement that already existed in the GMA, uh, but now we actually have, but it had to be done at a certain interval. We actually now have validation measures uh, that a grower, the regulator, and the mark, water market get um, uh, if there's something wrong, yeah. if the work that the pump is doing doesn't match the totalizer, right? Yeah. And so we actually have real-time validation, which is really a unique part of this. Yeah. You'll still need to have someone come out and validate the, 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 the flow meter calibration, but it's more of an ongoing calibration because things can go wrong. You can have, you know, a valve close or diverted, and then you'll have a, a change in output, and that's the, the ongoing calibration that we're talking about. Uh, do you know how many people that we have now that are... Yeah, so I'm Highland Kaufman, and I'm the business development manager for Ranch Systems. And I'm working hand-in-hand hand now as we begin to implement this. So the ordinance was passed um, early in the first quarter, and we're in the process now of going to the fields. So we have roughly 169 uh, 
wells have been submitted to Fox Canyon for um, application of the AMI. 101 of those are for AMI. We have about 50 of them right now that are having to go through their recalibration. So when they s submitted their paperwork, it was found that their calibration was not in, in check, so they're having to go out. And so they're on hold until they get that information in. So once again, there's checks and balances for everyone coming in um, before the equipment even gets out to the field. But I'm excited to say today, we're actually on our first site visit um, at a well. Our team is in place in Ventura and beginning to actually go out and some of the first wells will be actually be installed this week and that's so it's very and that's in phase two so right phase yeah. one was a small a geographically constrained pilot with, that was limited to 40 users and now this is an expanded the, the, this is now the expanded actually going forward so there are also some incentives that have been put in place for the water market and uh, getting involvement. I think Matthew's gonna give you an update on exactly how many of those we have, but we're very excited to get this going. And um, you know, roughly within a couple of three weeks, uh, there's been a lot of um, interest specifically from, from the growers and the well owners. So it's not lagging, saying, oh, we've only got a trickle in. You know, you know, close to a third of, of the wells are already submitted their paperwork. Does anybody have any questions? Of course, we do go ahead and pass the mic. Can you talk about what you expect or what you've seen so far as the nature of the transactions? When does the offeror decide he or she has water to offer up? How is what? Is it a long term or short term opportunity? Yep. And Great. Talk so, about the nature of the Sure, so a couple things. So first of all, um, uh, because the, the group decided we wanted a very methodical, careful approach to this, uh, the all, we are trading one acre foot of groundwater pumping to be used in the water year, and uh, it is only a temporary transfer for this water year, right? And so everything is, so again, they must, it must be relative to their use between October 1st last year and September 30th of this year. Uh, and so because phase two is still spooling up, we have actually not had um, transfers of pumping yet. Uh, but what we're anticipating is that in the pilot phase, it will simply be, it will mostly be people trying to true up at the end of the water year. So, uh, you know, a month or two before the water year, they start to see, oh, I'm a little over, I'm a little under, uh, and they will uh, either purchase allocation or make that allocation available to true up uh, so that they don't pay surcharges. Uh, I didn't mention this in terms of the history, is that uh, we've had quantitative allocations in Fox Canyon going back to the 90s, where surcharges were applied to any pumping beyond those quantified allocations. Uh, uh, and so um, this is a way, the transfer of pumping is a way to avoid paying those surcharges uh, during the pilot. Uh, 